Tomorrow marks the 10-year anniversary of the plane crash that took the lives of 10 members of the OSU family. Please join us at this time in remembering Kendall Durfee, Bjorn Falstrom, Nathan Fleming, William Hancock III, Daniel Lawson Jr., Brian Lewinstra, Denver Mills, Pat Noyes, Bill Teagans, and Jared Weiberg with a moment of silence. Thank you. We are one day shy of the 10 year anniversary of the darkest day in OSU history. Tonight, the OSU family comes together to remember those 10 great men and what they meant to us and to put our collective arms around the families. We are so humbled to have eight of the 10 families represented with us here tonight, just at the end of the cowboy bench. We know that it is emotionally tough for you to be here, but we certainly Truly appreciate you being here. Thank you to all of the family members. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our first cowboy to speak to you here tonight represents that team, the 2000, 2001 Cowboys, just as he did 10 years ago when he spoke so eloquently right here in Gallagher Iba Arena at the Memorial. Please welcome back Andre Williams. It's hard to believe it's been 10 years, but looking back, it's been a great 10 years. I hate that we have to gather under these circumstances, but I would like to say on behalf of the 2000-2001 Cowboy team, for what you all did then, what you've done every day since, you know, the prayers, the hugs, the pats on the back, the hand claps, you know, filling this stadium, cheering us on, cheering on every cowboy, every cowgirl, on behalf of that team, I'd like to say thank you. Um, it means a lot. I know it meant a lot to the team then. It meant a lot to the families. Uh, so you just can't thank you much. And I know that we will always continue to remember, you know, every year, every, every day. And I just want to say thank you and continue to cheer on the Cowboys. Thank you, Andre. Cowboy fans, thank you tonight for wearing those t-shirts that were in your seats. You guys look great. A number of people made those t-shirts possible. Griff Jones, Gary Bridwell, Stillwater National Bank, Chuck Watson, Jeremy Davis, Ed Evans, and a special thanks to Stan Clark. I don't know where Stan is, he's right there. Thank you, Stan, for making it happen. Also, thanks to our Eskimo Joe's artist, Mike Stabas. I know Mike's down here somewhere. Thank you, Mike Stabas. Great design. We love the shirts. And uh, thanks to the entire Eskimo Joe's family. We could not have done it without you, Stan. So thank you very much. All right. The first person to answer the call to make those T-shirts happen and to help make this evening happen is the next cowboy. We want to say a few words. He is one of the greatest athletes ever to wear the orange and black, but even a better person, as he proved when he left his NBA team in his rookie season because his Cowboy family needed him 10 years ago. He would practice with the team in those days following the tragedy, even though they wanted him back in Seattle. Welcome home, Desmond Mason. Thank you.
Uh, for, first off, I would like to thank uh, the University of Texas, Texas organization for uh, helping us remember those 10 lives. I think they definitely deserve a round of applause for coming out and doing what they did tonight. <clears throat> And when, when Larry called me and asked me that I want to speak today, I told him, uh, you know, let me think about exactly what it is I want to say because this can go on forever. Um, but the one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to talk to the families today about um, the impact that, that these 10 lives had on uh, this university and, and specifically the basketball organization. Um, I didn't really understand it, you know, until something like this tragic can happen. Uh, how much people really mean to you. And so uh, for us, and for me in particular, a lot of these guys um, really touch me, you know, as an individual. So um, just so you guys know that they really impacted us as a team. As you can see, they've impacted this university and they will always be remembered. These were 10 great lives and we're so happy that we can have you guys back here and let you all know how much they loved us and how much we care for them and how much we love you and care for you. So thank you very much for allowing them to be in our lives. Appreciate you guys, and thank you very much. Great job. Thank you, Des. Our next cowboy has never been short on words, and that talent has taken him to the worldwide leader in sports from good old Stillwater, Oklahoma. And uh, he is a big reason why we have this reunion. He thought it was important, as many of us did, but he really pushed to have the families back and the Cowboy basketball family from that time period back. He's the all-time assist leader in OSU history. Welcome home, Doug Gottlieb. It's good to be home. It's good to be home. This is what it's supposed to be like, isn't it? This is the place that I fell in love with, that Desmond fell in love with, that all of us here fell in love with, that those 10 men fell in love with. And we dedicate tonight to them and to you and to this program, this place that is so special to us all. But who's really to blame for me being here? It's not Coach Sutton. Obviously, he brought me. You can blame him. But you can also blame Bill Teagans for throwing me on TV, for Will Hancock fighting with Coach Sutton to allow me to do radio shows and TV shows. They're to blame for me having a post-basketball career because, as we all know, my basketball career was going about as far as my free throws. <laughs> but let me tell you one story. All right, there's been a lot made of all these guys, and they're wonderful men. Nate Fleming was a great teammate but he was not all in for my team my senior year, okay? It's not blasphemy to say, it's true. Desmond remembers we shaved our heads. We shaved our heads together in an effort to unify ourselves. I had done it two years before, not a good look, but somehow I even talked Alex Weber into doing it, Fred Yonsen into doing it, everybody was doing it, and Desmond was gonna cut everybody's hair over at the old Best Western. Nate Fleming went to Whispering Richard and said, Richard, can you do me a favor and just use a two or a three guard? My sister would kill me if I shaved my head bald like Gottlieb and Mason. He wasn't all in. Thank you so much for coming. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to the former players. And I know it means a lot to these families. We will never forget. And we got to get together more often. How about like every home game show up like this, huh? Thanks so much for having me. Thank you, Doug. You know, you telling that story made me think of one I'll tell quickly on Pat Noyes and Coach Sutton may not like this, but when I was running the Cowboy Network back in those days, you had to get basketballs autographed by Coach Sutton for our sponsors. So one day I show up and Pat says, Larry, you know, just have me sign that. And I said, you know what, Pat, our sponsors don't want your autograph. He goes, Larry, I do a better Eddie Sutton than Eddie Sutton does. <laughs> and I love that guy, Pat Noyes. And his father, Dan Noyes, is here tonight, Dan Noyes Sr. And he has not been back in 10 years. And Dan, I know this is hard on you, but Pat loved this place. 
and we are so glad that you're here with us, all right? Thank you, Dan, and thanks to all of the families. All right, our final cowboy to address you tonight is the man who not only had the responsibility, and I can't even imagine, of calling all of the families with that horrific news, but he also, if you'll remember back, lifted the entire OSU nation on his shoulders. And coach, you were our John Wayne back then during those difficult days, and we all thank you. Thank you. Coach Eddie Sutton. You know, as Andre said, it doesn't seem like it's been 10 years, although there's some days that uh, it does. You know, that accident affected Oklahoma State University like uh, nothing had ever happened before like that. And it also affected everybody that had any emotional ties to any of those players. It changed our lives. And it really changed my life. And those 10 guys were special. There, weren't, there wasn't a bad guy in that whole lot. And when that happened, those first few days, it was really difficult to get the team out here to practice. I mean, they were in mourning. They were hurting. But I think after a couple of days, we got those guys where they realized what those 10 that had given their lives, what they would want them to do. And they, you know, the guys realized, boy, they want us to win. Well, I think one of the things that helped heal some of us was when we beat the Missouri Tigers here 69 to 66. You know, when I was still coaching, every day I would make a walk down to that memorial area. And I would go there, and sometimes I'd say a little prayer, but I went there to look at those guys because I wanted to remember some of the great times we had, the fun times, because like I said, they were all special people. But anyway, I uh, borrowed something from Bill Hancock, I saw this the other day, and this is what he said. Life is so precious, so cherish every moment of every relationship. Hug the ones that are dear to you. But it changed my life, I'll tell you where it changed the most. I became more gentle, I think, in my association with my players. Some of the guys that had played for me in those early years came back and said, boy, you're getting soft. Well, I don't know about that, but it really changed my relationship with my family. Patsy and I will be married 53 years, June 1st. <laughs> and I have three wonderful sons and nine grandchildren, and I made a pact that early time uh, after the accident that I would call them and tell them I love them every day. And I've done that. And now I've got nine grandchildren. I try to call them as often as I can. And that's one thing I told our squad, the guys that were with us, I said, your family will be the closest people that you'll ever be around. And, and they want to know what you're doing. So at least once a week, will you write a letter or call home? And they were very, very good at, at doing that. But I think that's what all of us must always remember. When God calls us home, we may have a few special friends, but your family is the one that really counts. And we have become a, a whole family because of this accident. All those people have grieved, and it, it, it's goes beyond my comprehension how you react if you lost a son. You know, all of us that have children, you're expected to go before your children. 
And I know how difficult it was for all those people. But I hope that OSU and all the wonderful people in the United States, we got letters, cards, calls from people all over the United States, and I know they did too. And that certainly helped in our healing process. But I will continue to always remember those guys, and I think, I think that's what Dr. Halligan said, let's don't ever forget them, let's always remember them. And I ho hope 10 years from now I'm still living so we can all come back and have a celebration like we did this evening. We all went over to the West End Zone and had dinner together, and it was so great to see everyone. So all of you, thank you, and I speak for the families for helping us heal up at least a little bit. Thank you, Coach Sutton. Now, ladies and gentlemen, 10 years ago, we promised to always remember. And at Oklahoma State, we keep our promises. So tonight, in honor of those great men, those 10 fallen cowboys, we are retiring the number 10. Thank you all for being here. Make a difference for the Cowboys. And remember the 10. Thank you.